Hi, in this lesson we are going to learn how to value a company's shares in dividend valuation model or dividend discount model. On the dividend valuation model, we are going to value a company's shares based on predicted future dividend payments of that entity. It is based on the theory that a company's shares is worth the sum of all of its future dividend payments discounted back to their present value. In order to be able to value an entity's shares based on DVM, we need to assume that we can reliably predict future dividend per share of an entity in perpetuity with reasonable degree of accuracy. We also need to assume that the entity will pay predictable dividend in perpetuity and if there is any growth in DPS, then the growth rate is really going to remain constant. Furthermore, we predict future dividends based on historical dividend payment patterns of a company. That's why we are going to assume that historical dividend payment pattern is going to repeat in the future. In summary, value of a company's share is going to be equal to present value of dividends discounted using cost of equity, which is alternatively known as shareholders' required return. For the purpose of discounting, we will use following discounting formula. Our first formula is single cash flow discounting formula, where present value equals to CFN divided by 1 plus R to the power N. Here, CFN is the cash flow that is going to be delivered in nth period, and R is the discount rate. In our case, it is shareholder secret return, or alternatively known as cost of equity. Our second formula is perpetuity formula where present value equals to CF1 by R. R once again is the rate of discounting. In our case, this is shareholders required return or cost of equity of the company. And CF1 is the series of cash flow that is going to start from period 1. Fuchsia. Our next formula is perpetuity with growth formula, where present value equals to CF1 divided by R minus G, where G is the constant growth rate. Our next formula is annuity formula, where cash flow is delivered in a fixed number of installments. Here present value equals to CF1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus R to the power minus N by R. Here N is the number of fixed installments of cash flows. We also need to learn Gordon's growth model, where G equals to BR, G is the rate of growth, and B is the rate of retention. Say for example, a company earns $100 profit for the year and pays dividend of $30 and retains $70 from its earning. So, the rate of retention for this company will be 70%. This is like that. And R is the return on investment. That means the percentage rate of return that an entity is capable of earning on its new investment. Now, we are going to do some exercises to learn dividend valuation model practically. Our first exercise, what is the share price of GP? GP PLC maintains a constant DPS of $5 per share and shareholders required return is 15%. Over here, we have a perpetuity cash flow. There is no growth whatsoever and every single year cash flow is going to be $5. We know that share price is going to be equal to present value of dividend or DPS. And under perpetuity model, present value is going to be equal to CF1 divided by R. Over here, cash flow is the dividend. So, in our model, $5 divided by 15%. And the answer is... $33.33 per share.
In our next exercise, we need to value an operation. The question says, Zek PLC has decided to invest in a new business. The operation will not pay any dividend for the first four years. Expected dividend from year five onwards is expected to be $2 million per annum. Zek PLC has a cost of equity of 12%. Once again, this is a perpetuity dividend payment. Our dividend payment per annum is going to be $2 million. However, this $2 million is not CF1. Rather, this cash flow is going to start from year 5. That means this is CF5. In perpetuity formula, we required CF1. But we do not have CF1, unfortunately. If we use CF5 instead of using CF1, then our result will be value of year 4. So let's first calculate value of year 4. That is going to be equals to $2 divided by 12%. And the answer is going to be 16.67. Now, this 16.67 is value of year 4, that is a future value. We need to bring this future value back to the present value using single cash flow discounting formula. So, it will be like this, 16.67 divided by 1 plus 12 percent to the power 4. And the answer is going to be 10 point six dollar our next question says nubian plc is considering buying some shares in amara limited it is expected that for the first six years dividend per share from amara limited will be five dollars from year seven onwards dividend per share expected to be stable eight dollars Shareholders required return from a business with similar risk of Amaro Limited is expected to be 15%. How much maximum value should Nubian PLC place per share of Amaro Limited? Now, over here we get two dividends. First dividend is $5 per share and the second dividend is $8 per share. First dividend is continuing for just six years. That is a pattern of annuity. Calculating present value of this five dollar, we are going to use annuity formula, where present value equals to CF1 multiplied by one minus one plus R to the power minus N by R. So the present value of this five dollar dividend per annum is going to be five dollar multiplied by one minus one point one five to the power minus six divided by point one five. Solving this, we get eighteen point nine dollars. We have another dividend information that is going to start from year seven. So this is going to be CF7 equals to $8. Discounting CF7, we will receive value of year 6 equals to $8 divided by 15%. And that value is $53.3. Now, value of year 6 is a future value which requires further discounting. So, once again, present value is going to be equals to 53.3 divided by 1 plus r to the power n, that is 1.15 to the power 6. And this answer is going to be equals to 23.1 dollars. Now, we have two present values. $23.1 and $18.9 calculated based on two dividend information. Total value that we are going to place per share of Amaro Limited 
is going to be sum of these two values and that is going to be equals to $42 per share. In our next exercise, we are going to use dividend growth model. We are going to use Gordon's growth model to find out the growth rate of dividend per share. Let's read the question. Comment whether shares of Goon is overvalued or undervalued by the market. In this question, current market price of share is given $7. So we need to calculate share price based on dividend valuation model and compare that share price with this $7 to comment whether this share price in the market is overpriced or underpriced. Now the question reads, Goon PSG has earned EPS of 90 cent per share and paid dividend of 67.5 cents per share for the year. That means the rest of the earnings is retained by Goon PLC. We can calculate rate of retention equals to 90 minus 67.5 divided by 90 and that is 25% rate of retention. Further, the question reads, Goon PLC can earn a return on investment of 20%. So, over here we get R, that is return on new investment 20%. And under Gordon's model, we know G equals to BR. That is equals to 25% multiplied by 20% and the result is 5%. Further, we read that shareholder secret return is 12%. Now, we have our growth rate. So, we can calculate share price, which is going to be present value of future dividends. Over here, we use perpetuity with growth formula. And under perpetuity with growth formula, present value is going to be equal to CF1 divided by R minus G. R is given 12% and G we have calculated 5%. Now, the question is what is going to be CF1? Look at this, 67.5, that is the dividend paid. Dividend paid means this is a sunk information, 0 $0.675 dividend, already paid in year 0. And we need CF1 means dividend payment in one year time. So we need to really adjust one year's growth with this year 0 dividend to get year 1 dividend. And solving this, we find that the share price of Goon Limited should be $10.05. But the current share price in the market is $7. So we can conclude that share price of Goon is currently underpriced in the market. I hope this lesson was helpful for you. Thank you very much.